Hello and welcome back to the LLDS finals here at YCS London on the Friday. I mixed the order up, but we're here at the LLDS finals. Um, Matt, tell us about the matchup that we got coming up for round four. So this round we have one person who's on Frio. That's uh, Loa Strandberg. He's playing the traditional spiral deck. Nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. He's uh, also uh, elected the Sweden representative, also playing the set rotation in his variant. Versus Pablo Moreno, who's playing Invoked. Um, Pablo, interestingly, is uh, going with the free evenly matched main decks. He's also playing some interesting targets for his set rotation, including Closed Forest. Uh, he's also going with the Oracle de Zephra. But just in case his opponent set rotations and gives him the Zephra, he's playing Satellanite Zephra Zephraxion. Zephraxion. Nice. So he actually does have a search target if he gets caught off guard That's with pretty a cool. set rotation. Yeah, Loa Strandberg is also playing a strange one, Gateway to Chaos. Yes, um, this was actually popular in the OCG. I actually think some of the players in the main event tomorrow, uh, when well I say the main event, the YCS event, mm -hmm. uh, will choose not to play it because there was a guy who was very successful in the OCG in one of the tournaments by playing a copy of, um, I forget the full card name, but it was a Gaia from the movie pack. Gaia the the Thunderous. It, it was a uh, Gaia, so he had a search target for the uh, gateway. Right. Okay. So his opponents would give him gateway to chaos, and he'd go, yeah, search for my Gaia, special summon it, and they're like... You're not supposed to do that. Yeah, that's that's not supposed to happen. And um, so people then started to panic about it. It said some of the people switched to the Zephra. So it's gone a little bit of a next level game. That were uh, obviously Pablo has gone. All right, they're going to proceed at that result. Think they're going to go for a gateway to chaos. Be worried. I have the Gaia, so they're actually going to go for the Zephra. So I'm going to put the Zephra target in. Nice. I mean, is, is there is there many targets you could possibly use for the set rotation? Well, you're trying to, they're ideally trying to find something that your opponent can just never activate. Yeah. And yeah, for those who don't know, yeah, so set rotation, you give your opponent a field spell from your deck, but if it's something that they can't activate, then it just sits there. Yeah, because they're not allowed to play a new one over, over it until uh, they get rid of until it. Until they play it, yeah. Yeah, so they just, just leaves there, just stays there forever. Yep, and that can be absolutely crucial for blocking out many of these decks that are dependent on their field spells, uh, yeah, the like Spiral, spiral. Resort <laughs> be, yeah. being the main one, and uh, Dragonic Diagram, if you are brave enough to play True Dracos, in this environment. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see if those subtle differences again makes a big difference in our round four feature match. Okay, here we are. Yeah, uh, player's going to be drawing their opening hands. I believe it will be uh, Paolo to start. Pablo. Pablo. Sorry. I, we've got a... Uh, one of our organized play guys is uh, Paolo, and I have to keep mentally not calling him Pablo because I think of Pablo Escobar, so I panic and <laughs> say, so don't want to call him that. <laughs> I panic. So now when we actually have uh, someone called Pablo, <laughs> I, um, I keep, uh, my brain keeps ticking over going, no, you say Paolo, that's, that's his name. <laughs> uh, well, he uh, opens, opens his uh, Fraxion, which is... Completely uh, unideal, I guess. Zephraxion, is Wait, that he's the playing Alistair? Uh, yes, this is um, invoked. Yep, did that on purpose. Oh, you picked the feature match. Yes, ah, I did. There we go. Nailed <laughs> it. I was like, did I pick this? I don't remember this. Oh, there's a set rotation coming down, but he's going to be getting uh, lower. He's to start. Sorry, I thought it was Pablo. Uh, that's going to be feeding him a gateway to chaos. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if there's a, a, a card, it would obviously have to be a Zephyr monster, that fits both Gateway to Chaos and Oracle of Zephyr. Is there one? What, what's Gateway to Chaos? What is that? What is uh, that? It searches for a Gaia or a Black Luster Soldier. Okay, so that's unless there's a Gaia, the Fierce Zephyr Knight, then, then yeah. I feel like that's even a bit far for Kevin Tewart. <laughs> just, just like, like, he's pretty open when it comes to suggestions. But I think even that one would be a bit too far. Yeah. Um, can we take a look at uh, Stratellanite Zephraxion, please? Yeah. Because that's actually yeah. a super interesting one if it's... Yeah, so it's the Exciton Knight version. So as far as its effects, um, its pendulum effect's pretty relevant. Um, and other than that, it's just a, a destroyer set card. Uh, but you need to target another Telonite or Zephyr card in your monster or pendulum zone. Oh, okay, you can't even target itself. Okay, yeah, no, definitely. so it's just a, just a search target. And yeah. uh, we did see machine duplication. Oh, it's Lola's hand is filthy. It's filthy. He's got the soul charge. 
There's no more interaction coming from uh, Pablo. And you see how fast he is uh, playing here. Uh, because he's super oh. excited to windmill slam down this soul charge. Yeah. You could say that Loa just picked up the golden gun. <sighs> I've got plenty. I've got plenty. There's been about, what, 25 years of movies? Yeah. Is that, is that actually correct? I don't know the exact No, one. there's there's a lot. There's a, there's a, there's a lot. Like tw uh, you said 25, and I just thought, that's a, that's a big number. Yeah, it's a lot. Let's go with a lot. Uh, Lola also playing um, Mathieu the Time Lord. Yeah, which we're asking for a Swedish translation for. Oh, no, probably not. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Sorry, that's actually in Pablo's deck, and he's currently using his drone to take a look at it. And yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. This card seems horrible. I don't want my opponent to have it. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but I don't like it. The other two cards are part of Desires, so it's pretty relevant, actually. <laughs> it's like, do I want him to have this, or do I want him to have Desires? Oh, no, it's not. It's a book of clips. He's playing book well, of here's the thing. If he puts Desires on the top, he's giving his opponent two cards, and he's going to banish ten, so he's going to not have any information. Uh, if he puts the Book of Eclipse on the top, uh, that flips his entire all of his monsters face down and gives um, Paolo a chance to play through a Sleeper Agent. Yeah. Um, but again, if you put the Pot of Desires on the top, you give your opponent an extra card to work with. Yeah. But you will get rid of the Tempo 2 cards. If he gives him the Meteon, the Meteon can actually be summoned, uh, run in, and shove everything on the field back to um, Lowe's hand. Lowe's hands. So all three of those cards, actu there's actually a relevance to how it can cause him problems. I think he just went and got a utility wire, actually. So that can deal with Matayan, right? Yes, because he can target it. So that would uh, probably make it the most optimal choice. But then there's still a Blackwing Gofu and uh, Alistair and an Invocation to work with on top of the Meteon. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think it's going to matter because he has a Soul Charge as well. We've got a Dual Links music right I like it. Uh, there's going to be, there's, you see, he's now just uh, making a couple of uh, like two link material monsters um, with favorable arrows so he can set up for his uh, multiple fireable dragon. Yeah. Soul Charge is a bit strong. <laughs> it's extremely good in the post link environment. And yeah. Um, I ba basically, it was already when you paid like 5,000 life points, got five monsters back. That was a bit good. This is before Pen Pendulum sort of like stormed onto the scene. That was a bit good. Now, that when you bring back like a Firewall Dragon and put it in his own, you can mutually link it. That's like getting four monsters back. Yeah. So it's like you're getting four thousands worth of life points into one monster. Yeah. Then, then you can just like casually choose to put the arrows all facing it and go, now I'm going to return a bunch of cards from my grave to my hand. Yeah. Just so unbelievably powerful. Yeah, man. it absolutely is. I'm going to see... Ah, interesting. He's going to go with... The black, is it? No, it's not a black wing. It's, uh, it's another flying archetype. Yes, it's uh, Liralusk ret Liralusk. Uh, Reticle Starling, uh, which has an effect that lets you... Well, it increases the attack of a monster, and then he can detach material to search his deck for a level 1 uh, wing beast, which will be the DD Crow in his deck. So it guarantees that he has another form of interacting... Um, during his uh, next turn. Yeah, so we can see here, Loa's field is starting to get pretty scary. Lo Loa's field's just getting started. That's... Yeah. From what its actual potential is at this point, is absurd. Yeah. I love how the limitation right now to his plays is simply the number of monster zones that he has. <laughs> yeah, and we already saw that... Uh, Pablo threw down the uh, Ghost Ogre, and he's still doing all this, uh, all of these plays through that card. Yeah. I, I I don't remember if we had this last event, but I really like how we've got tiny little like pictures of the cards, as in like the you know next to the card names. We did, I don't think we had that last event where they are, they're all different colors based on what what type of card they are. We didn't have that last event. Huh. It looks really cool. Fair enough. Yeah, interesting fact. So what you're saying is when you get a Christmas card this year, you just wanted to have like little pictures of cards in it. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. Oh, that sounds like too much effort, though. Yeah. Really sorry. <laughs> okay. 
And here comes Quick Fix again. Now it starts to get even more crazy because uh, anytime a monster that's linked to the Firewall Dragon gets uh, sent to the graveyard, for example, as a link material, it's going to allow uh, Loa to drop additional monsters from his hand onto the field. Mm -hmm. This is just really good. <laughs> There's nothing more to be said. There's just so many different options. This is the problem. There's so many different options that you can go down this route. No, you say problem. I think uh, Loa right now sees it as very fair. An opportunity. It's like, no, 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 this is fair. This is fair. You can imagine how much stronger this field is going to get when you can include Trigate Wizard to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, released in the next structure deck. Yeah. I'm trying to pretend that that doesn't exist for now. Don't worry about it. It'll exist pretty soon. Don't worry about it. Now we're going to see Ib, and that's going to give two target, uh, two arrows pointing to the firewall. Sleeper, coming down. Three spiral cards getting banished. And then last resort. Most likely going to be equipped. And there we go. So and then it's shock He didn't even play the. Um, didn't even charge. need to play the soul charge. You can just use it ah. to. You can well this way. He can use the fireball dragon, uh, disrupt his opponent or add cards back to his hand if he needs to. Yeah. And then so if his fireball dragon does get answered, he can soul charge into a, a triple mutually linked fireball dragon and put the whole field back on, back on the table. Yeah. I wonder if there'll ever be a way to mutually link a fireball dragon with four. Um, no. No, you just can't. You just can't do it. There's no position where you could put it where you could get four. I'm saying Paleozoic may Link Monster may end up being in the spell and trap zone or something. I don't know. No, 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 I won't. Just to clarify, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you don't make such outrageous claims. That will not happen. I'll be a ruling nightmare. Yeah. Well, never put these crazy zones in the middle of the map that let you summon six monsters. <laughs> No, that's fine. It's fine. It's as long as the arrows don't matter while they're in the spell and trap zone. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, if there's going to be a comeback, um, Gofu is the good ca good card to start it with. Gofu is great because it does kind of de it does actually demand a response from the opponent. Yeah. Yeah. So we've not actually seen it on the stream yet, but this is the. This is the guy. This is the, the one. Firewall Dragon. So unbelievably powerful for a uh, card. Yeah. So the the only kind of uh, possible redemption factor is if Pablo is able to get a decode talker out and start doing something after uh, that. He wants to force his opponent's uh, sleeper agent. Um, yeah. that's, that's phase one. Um, Loa actually knows there's an Ingrisu that will force the either the Firewall Dragon. Well, it will force the Firewall Dragon. Wow, he reads fast. No, he's probably just looking for one word. It's like, does this target? Because then is it a threat to my super agent? Yeah. Yeah. Just getting some con notifications. I didn't catch that, so hopefully that wasn't a, a Some, warning. No, some, somebody's doing a, a free signing. Oh, nice, nice. Strangely enough, speaking of free signings, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh voice actors are actually here. Yeah, the Yugi and Kaiba, the, the English voice original actors. ones, right? Yeah, the original English voice actors are here. Yu-Gi-Oh and Kaiba. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, they're they're doing free signings on the MCM booth all weekend. Yep, and, and we're going to see it. the game scooped up. Yeah, that yeah. was a pretty good field. Yeah, as you, as you said earlier, there's not really a way to uh, to break their boards um, so much. It's more about the prevention than the cure. Yeah, I mean, you could go for Ross Firmo, but again, if it's not in your five, and it, uh, even then, that's not so solid, like uh, taking away those cards. And then uh, Loa was just going to follow it up with a Soul Charge. Yeah. Should 
Should we take a look at the uh, win ratios for these uh, players? Actually, yeah, Paolo didn't reveal what he was playing there. Uh, because even the drone didn't find the information it would have given away what his strategy was. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it found a, an Eclipse, Meteon, and... What was the last card that it found? Set Rotation. So we're going to see some sliding coming in. Uh, Pablo, after seeing that, most likely be considering his uh, kaiju that he has in his uh, his side deck. Um, Spell Shattering Arrow. Actually, he's playing a two in the main deck and then one in the uh, side deck. Might be going. Might consider the Spell Shattering to answer Last Resort, and I think Spell Shattering gets filled spells as well, right, Luke? Spell Shattering Arrow. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. Let, let, let me double check. I thought okay. it was all face-up spell cards, but then it's been a while since I've seen that one. No, I think you might be right. Yeah, I think you might be right, because I always thought to myself, the highest amount of damage you can do is 3,000. Yeah, face-up spell cards. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So it does hit field spells as well, which is really interesting. Uh, what else uh, could we be seeing coming in? Um. So, oh wow. Uh, okay, so uh, Lower being from Sweden, um, he actually had a 93% win ratio. How many events? Um, he only attended three LLDSs uh, to get his place here. 93%, well. But then again, that's such a small sample size. Like yeah. uh, the, the percentage is a little bit. It sounds like more than it is. Yeah, but he was he was first, first, and then second at the three events that he attended. So, well, congratulations to him. He yeah. uh, it certainly paid off for him there, and he's also currently nine points into this. So he's yeah. he's putting his weight. Yeah, it goes to show though that these um, you know these LLDS spots were you know. I don't want to say easy by any means, but you know, for the smaller countries who didn't necessarily have that many LLDS events, they were still very possible to, to get into that top 18 spot. It was possible. I mean, um, again, it came down to the top countries performing players. So you were actually competing against like everyone yeah. uh, this time around. Um, but yeah, it, it, even even with that, uh, even if you did try and criticize and say, yeah, well, there's only three events and 93% is less impressive. Um, He's nine points into this, and uh, he's one game up, uh, working towards his 12 points and locking in his top four slot. Yeah, let's have a look at Pablo's record. Uh, he's currently on seven points, or do you mean his uh, play statistics? Yeah, his play statistics. Let's have a look, see what we can... Turn one, set rotation, going off for uh, Loa. Uh, Pablo choosing to force Loa to go first. Oh, wow. Pablo turned 12 points. And he fails to open any of his hand traps. Yeah, he's having close forest, uh, which he's, he's kind of, he's playing a couple of cards that he never really wants to draw, and he's drawn them quite often. Yeah, I mean, he has to go through to push out with. He has the Book of Eclipse as well, so he can actually get onto the field. And he's got a Pot of Desires, which he's going to be able to resolve because his opponent only has Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. And he's got the, well, the Magical Meltdown does nothing for him because he has to get rid of the set card in his field, uh, field spell zone, which is Gateway to Chaos. Okay, give him Gateway instead of Oracle of Zephyr. Yeah, he actually doesn't play the Gaia. That'd be funny if he did. I want to see that at least once this weekend, where someone plays the field spell from set rotation. And that guy will be a hero. Yeah, absolute hero. I think this is the strongest interaction in the Spiral deck, is this point here. Uh, Master Plan Helix. Because you get yeah. so many cards out of it, including a powerful Link monster. Yeah. Um, in many cases, you could question uh, the... While I have said the best two-card combo in the Constructed format at the moment, Advanced Constructed is Quick Fix uh, Machine Duplication. I do wonder if actually holding back your Ash Blossom for the uh, graveyard effect of Master Plan is viable. Yeah, and just they, they just end with a Decode Talker. Well, yeah. Um, if they if they give up, yeah. If they've given up the um, 
the double helix at that point, they can't get back the quick fixes. Yeah. Uh, and then they, you jam them with a deco token. As long as they don't have the sleeper um, and the last resort, mm -hmm. you're actually in an okay situation. But if you do um, Ash Blossom the machine duplication, and they do find a way to sneak one more monster onto the field with one for one or Spiral Super Agent getting lucky, um, then immediately they make double helix, master plan, and then they can go as normal. They can still set up deco talker, last resort, slight spiral sleeper agent. Yeah. So big soul charge here. Yeah, <laughs> that's soul charge again. He didn't even play it last game. It's probably gonna be everything, right? Do you just take everything? Okay. Uh, yeah. I, was, I was like, yeah. I was wondering why he was choosing. <laughs> I just take everything, take it all, take it all with you. Um, fortunately, Pablo does have the. Um, Book of Eclipse, but I imagine all of these monsters are going to be consolidated into uh, link uh, as link materials. Yeah. So we're going to see a firewall dragon double linked, most likely. Or co linked twice. Well, that was cool. I liked how I picked up his cards there. That was awesome. Like a magician. Yeah. And then banish free, sleeper, whack down the uh, last resort. The last resort. No, okay, he goes up again. Second uh, fireball. Oh, wow. Yeah, that now lets him split his two disruption effects over two monsters. Whilst making sure that he has three monsters to banish for Spiral Sleeper. Last resort. He just banished and didn't. <laughs> he, he did this in the wrong order. <laughs> yeah. And he's also got Wait. the I don't think has rescue resort. face down as well. Oh, he doesn't have last resort. Oh, he's got another. Oh, he just chooses not to. It's left his field a little bit wide open there. Um, yeah. Because if the sleeper gets removed, it will clear the field. But then he could always, if it's threatened, he could always use one of his firewalls to put it back in his hand. Yeah, that's a good point. That's not as impressive as I would have thought Lois turn was going to end up on. Yeah. Actually, the... Uh the Book of Eclipse here is going to be huge. No, he can't flip down the Spiral Dragons. And there's no other Spiral... Oh, there's a Spiral mission face down. So, actually, Loa can flip up the mission, add back a, a Spiral Monster, and then use the Sleeper Agent to destroy the mission, to destroy yeah, two of his opponent's point. cards. And then he can get the Master Plan back, and then use Master Plan to start doing horrible things again. Yeah, uh, I thought that it, it, the Book of Eclipse might be able to at least do something. Pablo here, not looking too happy. Some very late hand traps right there. That's, that's one of the big drawbacks to playing so many of these cards is if you draw them after your opponent's committed, they're just awful. Like, they don't answer, an answer an established field. But as you said fairly ver uh, early on, it's actually more, the format seems to be more about preventing your opponent making their setup as opposed to actually being able to break it. Yeah. Because people are playing so many combo pieces in their decks right now. Yeah, it just, it doesn't seem to be viable to break break the strategies. It's some, you know, kind of important to prevent that instead. Like actually, when you, especially when the monster, when your field can't be targeted, uh, when you got the resort up, yeah. and the resort is threatening to search for another card. Yeah, I think that just alone is enough kind of pro is enough protection for you to want to just stop it off before it's even started. Spiral Resort is such a ridiculously good field spell. Yeah, it really is. Like the legendary fisherman is sad by comparison to how good the field spell is for Spiral Resort. Yeah, it's like you gave me Legendary Ocean like 15 years ago, man. Where's 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 my upgrade? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, Pablo is playing this exactly as he needs to be. He's... Uh, wow, he doesn't even have to use the Fire Wall Dragons. But he can use an Ingressu to get himself out, and the Fire Wall Dragon is now no longer linked. Yeah. So that's one disruption down. Magical Meltdown coming down next. Um, Lola briefly considers uh, flipping up his trap card. He's got the rescue. There it is. Uh, 
And that is going to be a hard shutdown for Pablo's turn. He has uh, nothing else he can do there. No, I mean, he can continue to survive a little longer with that Book of Eclipse next turn. Well, he's got two. Um, but again, he can't do anything about the, f uh, the Fireball Dragon. Play Close Forest. It's actually super important. Um, let's see if we have... Yeah, we do. Close Forest is super important. Uh, it stops it stops uh, lower from activating any field spells. Yeah, let's just, uh, he's hoping that he doesn't get uh, obliterated here when he's facing down 5,300 points of damage before uh, Lolo's even drawn his card for the turn. And yeah. then there's a the mission. There's another 19, take out your Eclipse. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't set both Eclipses. Both? Nah, would have made sense. 71 plus 500 76 sorry it might be 77 I think I may have done the math wrong <laughs> that's all right it's plenty of damage it's it's in it's in the high high territory and then um, he can still go further with this. Yeah. Make a link summon. Then use the firewall to drop. Um, does he have anything else in his hand? Uh, Lower. Lower has got a spiral resort and a ghost ogre and snow rabbit, so nothing much of use because of that close forest. Not that he needs any more. Pablo didn't even like have any kind of faith behind him playing the the uh, draw and lock bird there. He just kind of dropped it down. Yeah, there's a double helix. Interesting placement. Because now he cannot try and guess. He can add, sure, he can add a spoil to his hand. Uh, he's got this. He's already used the spiral mission rescue in his graveyard. Yeah, I don't think he's got anything else here. I think Pablo is going to live. And then we can see Quick Fix coming back. Adds back, uh, banishes the drone. Special summon. You got Dark Hole on top of your deck. There we go. And that gets no, me there. There we go. That's enough. Pablo, unfortunately, going to be stuck on seven points in this tournament while Lola moves on undefeated 4-0. Yeah, wow, that's that's pretty strong. I mean, at this point, he's almost guaranteed a place in the top four. But let's talk a little bit more about that in our post-match discussion. And we're back. So that that was a that was an interesting matchup. I mean, Pablo didn't really get he didn't much. even summon one of his invoked cards. Yeah, like he didn't get to play the game because he couldn't get through the startups that Loa was putting out in front of him. Yeah, what what was interesting for me was that that deck is aimed at beating Spiral, right? That's yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. That like it he didn't get any of his evenly matched. He couldn't uh, he couldn't get to a point where he could safely summon Alistair. Yeah, um, he never got away with uh, the Meteor on the Time Lord. It just yeah. His deck just fell apart in the face of the consistency of the spiral yeah. strategy. Yeah, it just, uh, I, I felt like there was way more to be seen with Pablo's deck, and he just didn't, wasn't, wasn't able to, to, to show us that. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. That's, uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Uh, Loa playing on as uh, one of our undefeated players. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I think things would have to go really, really wrong for him to not make top cut at this point. Yeah. I don't want to say for sure. There's got to be, there's got to be some. Like already pre-existing draws within the tournament for for anything to possibly go wrong at this point. There there are a few I've I've seen already, but yeah, it's got to go pretty wrong at this point for him. Yeah, he should be issuing for the top four. Um, but then just win all your rounds. That's the way you want to guarantee that you make <laughs> yeah, it to the top. Yeah, you're definitely going to make it. Okay, guys, let's um, let's wrap it up there for this round, and we're going to be right back with more live coverage from YCS London 2017. Catch you guys soon.